Welcome to a WNF Spotlight, where we introduce the faces of those behind the World Naturopathic Federation and share what we have been working on to support the global naturopathic community. I'm Dr. Claire Watson, naturopathic doctor from British Columbia, which is in Canada, and therefore I am a part of the CAND, which is the Canadian Association of Naturopathic Doctors, who is a member of the WNF. I am on the communications committee and I am joined by Dr. Moira Fitzpatrick. So hello, Dr. Moira, thank you for joining us today. The World Naturopathic Federation is excited to have you share a bit about yourself and your experience with the WNF. Well, thank you. Um, I'm glad to be here and I'm very supportive of the World Naturopathic Federation. I'm a naturopathic doctor and um, I'm passionate about global naturopathic medicine and the health and well-being of individuals, families, communities, and our planet. And one of the things that I recognize is all naturopaths do is the healing power of nature and food as medicine. Mm -hmm. And that depends upon a diversity of vegetables. And what is important is in order to have that diversity, we need a biodiversity in agriculture. And that really depends on sustainability of agriculture and the sustainability of the soil. And I graduated from Bastyr University in Kenmore, and I practice in Encinitas, California. Wow. Well put. Thank you for sharing that piece, uh, especially connecting us back to biodiversity. So could you just say a quick piece of what member of the WNF are you associated with or are you representing today? So I'm representing uh, the United States to the American Association of Naturopathic Physicians. Perfect. And can you share a little bit more of how you are specifically involved with the WNF? So I'm on the executive committee and I'm the chairperson of the Environmental Health Committee. And um, we've been doing quite a bit in terms of trying to educate the world um, about toxic pollutants, how they affect us, and what we can do to protect ourselves. Which is amazing. I, I'm really excited about your work, and I have been seeing some of it, but let's share a little bit more. So can you share about some of the projects uh, that the Environmental Committee has been working on? So the Environmental um, Health Committee is really focused on literally that, our health as it relates to the environment. And it's interesting because the WHO has said that healthier environments could prevent almost a quarter of the global burden of disease. Wow. And so that's pretty significant. And as naturopaths, we're focused on prevention. We're focused on the healing the root cause and utilizing the healing power of nature. And that includes the environment. And from my perspective, we have a responsibility to be involved in sustaining the environment in which we live. Um, and that we need to utilize the resources when we're working with our patients. For instance, mm -hmm. just one hour a day in nature can improve our memory by 20%. That's wow, pretty I, significant. Yes, I didn't realize it was 20%. And other things, you know, we are all affected by toxic pollutants in our household products, in our personal care products, in plastics. You know, we hear about plastics affecting the health of the ocean and the fish and the environment, but they affect us as humans. And the most notorious toxin in plastic is BPA. That's what gives the rigidity to plastics. It's in our water bottles, it's in our plastic containers, it's in our baby bottles, it's in pacifiers. And when you think about it, BPA is a hormone disruptor, and that can affect the reproductive health of both men and women. And so that's going to affect future generations. It's something we need to think about. And there's alternatives. We don't need to use plastic. We can use stainless steel. We can use glass bottles. We don't have to store foods in plastics, and we certainly don't have to use uh, plastic coverings. So that's just a the tip of the iceberg. Really is. Where can members and those following us uh, find out more information about the specifics of what you're talking about? So if they go to the World Naturopathic Federation.org, and then what you'll see there is we identify what the toxic pollutants are, how they affect you, and what you can do about it. And there's there's a lot of research for people that really want to dive in, but there's also just bullet 
points. These are the essential things that you can do to protect yourself. You know, one simple thing, or there's so many apps today that you can just take a look at, you know, what's in your cosmetics, what's in your personal care products, what's in the foods that you eat. Is there a topic or project that you'd like to highlight? Well, I think one of the one of the topics that's most important is personal care products. Yes. Because on the average, each person applies 11 personal care products to their body each day. That's about 126 different chemicals. Wow. And when we put, when we utilize um, creams and, and whatever it is that we're using, those toxins don't go through the liver. They go right into our skin. And um, so we're, we're exposed. And yet, very few countries, including the U.S., we don't regulate personal care products. So if the consumer is uninformed, then they're constantly putting themselves um, in danger. They're, they're exposed to dangerous chemicals. And cosmetics are the largest class. Cosmetics and personal care products are the largest class of avoidable exposure to toxic ingredients. Um, that's pretty significant. It's, it's quite huge. And just in cos it is. And in, in cosmetics alone, um, there are endocrine disruptors that are associated with asthma. You know, you take into account also the, the pollutants in the air, allergies, infertility, and this ought to get somebody's attention, reduce testosterone production. Yes. Because they're so, it can be quite overwhelming on where to get started. It sounds like you're saying review your personal care products, take a look at the website, see what the bullet points are, and see where you can start to make those changes uh, to help prevent some of those hormone disruptors as well as just chemicals being around and in your body daily. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, you know, there's so many other topics there. Um, yeah. There's also food. The more we can eat food that's organic or local, the cleaner the food. Um, and then there's a whole section on health conditions from women's health to diabetes, to obesity, to um, we're filling out those topics as well. Yeah. You know, many people think that um, obesity is just related to overeating, but it's not. There are many toxic pollutants that contribute to obesity. Toxic pollutants are affecting our health in so many different ways. If you go back and look at some of our past social media posts, we have been talking about how obesity isn't just how you're eating or your intention and will around eating. Uh, there are so many other factors that your team and your committee has shared, and we put them and pack them up into our social media. So to take a look back at those, if you're interested to get started, but then there's more information on the website like you just shared. And Dr. Moira, is there anything else you'd like to share about the WNF, the, the environmental committee itself, or even something that you've learned while being a part of the committee? Well, I see the WNF, as, well, first of all, naturopathic medicine exists in every world region. That's yes. significant. And um, I see WNF as a way to bring us together globally and to strengthen our profession and to address health concerns, you know, specifically prevention, chronic disease, environmental health. And one of the things that I love about naturopaths is that we're aligned in values. And we have a lot to teach one another. And I think that naturopaths are the healthcare providers of the future. And one of the things that's most important and near and dear to my heart is that we recognize the importance of a clean, healthy, sustainable, and just world. And that there are solutions out there. And if we all come together, we can help educate and implement those solutions. Beautifully said, and what a beautiful message to end our interview on. Uh, lots to consider and reflect on and how we are such a global community as a naturopathic community, but just everyone as a whole. So thank you so much, Dr. Moira, for introducing who you are, showing your face and your involvement with the WNF. And from me, but also from all of us, thank you for the work you have done and you continue to do. And for those watching, thank you so much for tuning in.
You can find the link that we've been discussing, the WNF's environmental website, in the caption. If you have any questions, feel free to write them in the comments or reach out. Also, like I said, take a look at our past social media posts for more environmental facts and information. And lastly, if you find yourself as an interested individual naturopathic doctor or naturopath who wants to get more involved, take a look at the list of members on our website and reach out to the one that represents your country or reach out by our other means. So thank you again so much. Uh, Dr. Maria, any closing statements from you? Thank you very much for all that you do for the World Naturopathic Federation. Oh, <laughs> thank you. And for everyone and Dr. Maria, stay tuned as we will have more WNF spotlights in this year to come. Thank you.